Hello again everyone and welcome to part 2 of the beginner tutorial for Terraria. What we're going to do in part 2 is really two things. You see this empty room here? Well, we're going to need a merchant NPC to fill it. You get the merchant NPC once you have a total of 50 silver and as you can see, I only have 4 silver so I really need to get my act together and get some silver before he will start to appear. So I'm just going to make a run for it. Um, maybe this is a little inadvisable, but what I really need to do is go out into the world. You see, already I'm facing a physical obstacle, and so what I'll do is I'll use these ropes I got earlier to navigate down all the way to the bottom cave here. And I'm going to light the way. You really just have to take a few risks and move out into the world if you want to get anything decent. So I'm going to do that here. And... As I mentioned in the last video, the weapons at this point are pretty pathetic. But I think I can probably handle these enemies. If I can't, I'll just use a recall potion and return to the safety of my base. Let's try this out. Other than acquiring silver, what I really need to start getting is some basic metal. In this case, it would be copper. As well as some stone. And right around my character is quite a bit of stone, which would be nice to get. Change over to the short sword very weak weapon but has a little better knockback so you might want to just stick with it and hope for the best. Take a potion there and I'll whittle these enemies down until the point that I can survive them. Alright, one down, two to go. Once these enemies are out of the way what I'm going to do is probably put some dirt locks up just to bar a path for any future enemies to come down here and that way I can work in some peace. So let's do that. You should have some dirt easily by now. Um, the return of the slime actually indicates that we are now back in the daytime and so the nighttime zombies are gone so things are going to get a little easier at this point we've survived the first night but we really do as i say need to get cracking on some equipment and to do that we're going to need some stone to build a furnace and we're going to need to find some copper ore that we can smelt into copper bars and with the copper bars we're going to be crafting some new equipment um, but you know, this is a little tedious at first. You just have to break out your pickaxe and get going on the stone that you find nearby. And you're going to want quite a bit of this, especially if you have any uh, ambitions to improve the look of your base. You can use stone to create stone slabs, stone walls, all kinds of nicer looking, more sturdy looking substantial structures to replace the primitive wooden structure that you probably are going to build on day one. But anyway, let's get this stone cleared out. And this dirt wall up here is already paying dividends. Don't be afraid to use the game's mechanics to your advantage. And don't worry about the physics in the real world in Terraria. The Terraria really doesn't care about it. Look, I can do that. So just use the game's mechanics to your advantage. So let's clear out this stone. And I can see some copper down on the bottom left. We're going to harvest that for sure once we get this stone out of the way. And this is all really important. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the video you need 50 silver for the merchant to arrive. In my previous video I mentioned the bug net item. That's a very useful thing to acquire as soon as you can. Well the merchant among other things, sells the bug net, and so it's very good to get him as soon as you can. But we can't neglect our crafting either, and so that's what I'm going to focus on here. You basically take it as it comes. If you come across some stone and ore, well, go ahead and harvest it, because you're going to need it. And so that's what this little fellow is doing right now. All right, that's pretty much all of the stone here. Let's go over here and get some more, since we're already in the area. And the pile of stone should be getting pretty substantial at this point. But that's good. As I said, you need a lot. So never really underestimate how much you need. It usually behooves you to get in a little more than you think you'll need because you'll really burn through it once you start crafting. So we're going to really dig out this small cave here to get the most out of it. It doesn't make for great television, right? Or YouTubing, however you want to describe it. But it is necessary. I'm trying to show you guys what I tend to do. And so you're going to greedily, greedily hoover up these stone blocks, like I'm doing here. And, alright, that should be good enough for now. So I've got, how much stone do I have? I have 103 stone, 12 tin ore. Okay, 
that's the other thing I should mention. Um, Terraria is kind of funny in that it will have one of two types of ore sets, depending on your world. For instance, some worlds have iron, other worlds have lead, and they're functionally equivalent. So don't freak out if you can't find any iron. It might just mean that you're in a world with lead. And, uh, hang on. Tin is another one of those kind of, um, ores you'll get that might be named something else in an equivalent world. Don't sweat it. It's all basically the same thing. So let's plant some ropes. Again, these ropes are going to be very useful for exploration. And you'll come across a lot of them, so don't feel like you have to be miserly with their application. You can be fairly liberal in applying these ropes. All right, let's do a bit of exploring before we return to base. Clear out these pots. You might realize that this is quite a bit larger than your typical tree, and you're not mistaken there. These are randomly in the game world. They're not everywhere. Uh, they're certainly not normal trees. I think they're called living trees if they have a hollow path through them. This one doesn't. It's simply an obstacle, and so it's just regular wood. But very useful to acquire the wood while it's here. Let's carry on. Let's explore the world a little more before returning to base. We might get enough to get the merchant here. How much are we at? Okay, we're only at 10 silver, so we have a ways to go, unfortunately. So I think day two here is really going to have to be focused on crafting. Okay, and you saw the lead there. If you see any veins of ore, go ahead and harvest it while it's on the surface. You'll never find an easier time to get it than on the surface in the daytime. So, lead, what does that indicate? Well, it indicates we're not in a world with iron. We're in a world with tin and lead. So, instead of copper and iron, we're going to have tin and lead instead. But Okay, I moved into the desert. Let's go ahead and get this. Lead is more powerful than tin, and so you're going to want to harvest it. Because that will allow us to race in and get some better stuff early on. But I'm going to... Go ahead and use a recall potion. I'm a little out of my depth with, with those creatures, and so enough is enough. Let's return to the safety of base, and let's get a little organized here. In the last video, I would acquired this chest. Let's go ahead and put the chest down. It'll let me organize quite a bit better than before. And now that I have stone in my inventory, let's see if there's anything new that I can craft. Uh, what's this? You notice I can now craft the furnace. Furnace requires stone, wood, and torches. Thankfully, I have all of those things. And let's go ahead and craft it. And then put it down in the central crafting room. And when you're in proximity of the furnace, it affords you even more new options. Over here on the far right, you got tin bars. That might be called copper in your world. And lead bars, as I said, that might be called iron in your world. So let's see how many we can get. Probably not too many. I was able to make four lead bars. And four tin bars. So I probably can't craft anything great with those yet. I'm going to need a, a bit more. Um, but while I have the crafting screen open, I complained in the last video about how bad the copper short sword was, and it is dreadful, especially with a negative modifier like this. So instead of the annoying copper short sword, which does 4 damage and has a bad attack arc, let's see what else we can make. Even with wood, you have a few crafting options. You can make some armor, but you can also make the wooden sword, which does 3 more damage. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's look at the attack arc. Isn't that much better? You can see how that would be more defensive for you, more powerful. So we're never going to use this copper short sword again. Uh, but while we have the crafting around and we've got extra wood to use, let's go ahead and build some quick armor. Over here you can build admittedly very weak armor for your character, but a little bit is better than nothing at all. So let's build a wooden helmet. We're going to equip it over here. And it shows up on your character. You look at him, he's got this silly little wood hat on now, but he's got a little bit more defense too, so he's tougher. Similarly, we're going to in, uh, include the wooden breastplate in our crafting. And I think we ran out of enough wood to make the boots. But you get the idea, right? We have a little bit of armor now. We've got two defense. That shows up as this little shield 
icon next to your equipment menu. So you've got a little bit of defense against the, the dangers of the world. So let's go test out the new wooden sword we made. Look at that. You couldn't have done that with the copper short sword, right? It's, it's definitely better. So we're going to go back out. I had passed by this little ore vein of tin. So we're going to do our best to get that right now since it's so close and at hand. Uh, we're really thirsty for ore at this point in the game. Later on, you're not going to stop and bother digging up some tin. But right now, it's very useful, so let's not pass it by. All right. And I'm going to go hunt for a bit more, because frankly, I think we'll need a bit more tin to really do anything useful. Um, I see some here. Why not? Let's just go ahead and harvest this. Let's go ahead and harvest this ore. We can always fill it back in with dirt later if we're afraid of it looking ugly. In fact, let's go do that now. So if you're into aesthetics, don't worry about it. You can, as, as I just did there, you can put dirt blocks back to kind of restore the look as you deem fit. All right, just taking stock of the situation. I've got a little bit of armor. I've got an improved weapon. And I'm starting to acquire larger and larger amounts of tin ore, which will be very useful in terms of crafting better equipment. But this is going to take a while. Um, don't feel like you need to race out and get a full iron or lead set right away. You saw when I went into the desert that while there was lead available, it posed certain dangers with the stronger enemies around. So take your time, just probe around a little bit. And only take the risks you feel are suitable. Take a few risks, but it's not like you have to do anything crazy to get established in this game. At least at this point, it's pretty easy on the player. So we're going to carve a path through this giant tree. And remember what I said about physics in Terraria? All right, it's almost like Wiley e. Coyote, where the physics at least takes a pause. You can chop through a tree, and it won't fall down on you. Um, these regular trees will, if you chop the base. They will fall down, but these big what I call living trees, you don't have to worry about them crashing down on the player. So as you go around, again, don't be afraid to use the ropes. They'll help you back up. 